G'day. I wanted to talk about Yowies and uh, the mythical Australian Yowie, which I've been doing research into. And um, it's interesting because Yowie's a funny name and uh, it's not actually an altogether correct name uh, for what it is. And most people when they hear of a Yowie think of the American chocolate and um, which probably isn't such a good thing but uh, anyway it is uh, Yowie is an Australian word as far as I can work out it comes from Yowri uh, which is an Aboriginal word and that's how they described a uh, um, hairy man living in the wilds of Australia but um, you know the name's interesting because people when they see something associate it with something. Um, for an example, the, uh, the Spanish, when they first saw horses, described them as deer. And uh, whoever saw hippopo uh, hippopotamuses, whoever saw um, rhinoceroses for the first time, described them as unicorns. Um, at one stage, the um, the Yowie was described as an Australian gorilla, but that was only because the African gorilla had been discovered by that time and people associated a hairy hominid bipedal creature that looked like a gorilla as a gorilla. So um, that's where Yahoo came from as well. It was called a Yahoo, particularly around this area. and. Uh, it was called Yahoo because a um, hundred years before a very popular book called Gulliver's Travels described a Yahoo as being a hairy man so hence they saw a hairy man hence they called it a Yahoo. So historically it went through stages who knows what the original settlers the original uh, well invaders thought when they arrived here and they had confrontations with a eight or nine foot tall hairy man living in the Australian bush but whatever they call it I don't know but I have found a 1790 woodcut from Sydney Cove showing a large hairy man being held between two m nearly half sized men with with rifles or muskets they would have been in those days now whether that was a representation of just something, the capture or something happening in 1790 uh, is anyone's guess. It might be just the wild imagination of the, uh, of the print cutter. But as I was going along, my interest was first um, piqued by it, but I read a lot of historical articles and especially historical articles from around here. And I was going through a really old um, church um, very boring church um, notice um, describing the goings on at the church meeting and uh, it was being held at night and uh, was concluding up about 9.30 and they made note at the end of this very long and boring it dealt with crops and weather and all sorts of things but at the very end it said and the meeting was adjourned and constantly um, uh, interrupted by the antics of that becoming far too common Australian gorilla. So this is in um, 1870 by this stage. So they're, they're, uh, they're calling it an Australian gorilla. As I went along I found other articles in neighbouring areas and very close to this area um, showing the thing being called the Yahoo. And it was so serious at that time that the, um, the Yahoo was actually being hunted by groups of men that were forming in townships to go out and find it. That met, led me along to an article in the local paper of the time uh, describing, and it was actually written by a man named George Webb, who was a, an original settler around here and he was off, related the tale of uh, being off with his brothers uh, searching for stray cattle in what the area is uh, 
I've been there. It's it's incredibly incredibly rugged and uh, and thick with with scrub. And they were searching for cattle in there, and they would settled for the night, and they didn't have a match, so they couldn't light a fire. So they went to bed early, and they were awakened during the night by the sound of something crashing through the bush along the ridge line, and then it came down the hill towards them. They were they it was dark; it was just before dawn, and um, they couldn't quite see what it was. One of the brothers saw it and described it as being like a black man, but only uh, with a blanket over the top of him. So they wished it was uh, 15 minutes later and they would have seen what it was. But anyway, one of the brothers discharged his pistol that he carried with him at it and it belted off into the scrub never to be saw again. But at the end of that article he also makes uh, mention of interviewing another man who was a young young boy, so they est I forget estimate him at being 13 or 14 years of age, witnessed the killing of a hairy man down by the Murrumbidgee River and the junction of the Yass River. And um, apparently they chased this animal um, onto a rocky hilltop. Um, the Aboriginals chased it onto a, um, a rocky hilltop uh, where they cornered it with torches and killed it with their nulla nullas. Then they dragged it down the hill by its legs and it was described as like a black man but covered in grey hair. Um, so that was just a couple of the references. All over Australia there's hundreds of, res um, of um, notices basically describing the same thing. Uh, I think about it at the time that these are communities that are way apart from each other. Um, newspapers were a limited thing and they tried to remain with respectability and when they reported these things they were reporting honest and sincere people who had experiences with an, an Australian gorilla. So, all of this historical, all of this historical stuff the cat just scared me to death. All of this historical stuff is um, leads along a story to where then I found more contemporary stuff in the 1970s and then it got really weird with this fellow Rex Gilroy and um, but it did pique my interest enough to start looking around and see who was looking at this and there are various forums, forums and Facebook pages and uh, groups and things like that and they're all dealing with the search for the Owie. Now they're all, um, they range everything from people that believe in orb spirits and uh, to mental telepathy and uh, things like that and shape-shifting and interdimensional travel um, right down to serious people that believe that there's an unknown animal, uh, a cryptic animal that has managed to basically avoid being seen by the population um, for the centuries that we've been here, or Europeans have been here, but it was well known to the Aboriginal people. Aboriginal people I know today down the south coast firmly believe in them. The, um, um, yeah, so the Aboriginal people um, knew, knew of them, early European settlers knew of them, and they were reported at various stages through right up to the present day. So eventually I ran into a YouTube channel and I will recommend it and it's called The Rusty 222 and uh, simply as that he's an anonymous fellow that researches away but he tries to do things in a scientific method and he's got some pretty convincing videos there that um, support the um, the, his evidence supports something being out there in the bush. It can't get a clear photograph as yet, but it has been photographed. But it comes out pixelated as head and shoulders, broad head and shoulders, peaking from a very long distance. Um, because it's believed they're that, well, as he tells me, it's believed that they're that um, cautious about uh, approaching electronics. He also has a belief that they can see the camera has an eye and avoid it like the plague. 
but he also has series and series of recordings of uh, um, what, what can only be described as uh, ape-like, chimpanzee-like, um, bipedal walking, um, amazing recordings, grunts, uh, mouth clicking, um, um, calls, wood knocking, um, all sorts of uh, things backed up with the, the evidence of these, the photographic evidence of these heads and shoulders. <coughs> and uh, it all seems very plausible. So, are they out there? I don't know. The, uh, and nobody really knows except those people that have seen them firsthand. And there are hundreds and probably thousands of people in Australia that claim to have seen what is today called the Owie. I've met these people, I've run into them over the time of me researching. It all started off researching historical articles until it caught my interest. But I've, I've travelled to the Blue Mountains and uh, I've spoken to whole families and other people, researchers they call themselves now, that um, get together and, and try and get some sort of evidence. So this has been going on with these people for 18 and 20 years in the Blue Mountains, them trying to confirm their visual sightings because everybody says they're, they're you know, they're loopy or just doesn't believe them or they've seen, you know, they've made it up or something like that, which is really um, sad for people and I think it actually stops a lot of people that do or would possibly have an encounter with an Australian Yowie um, from coming forward and making any um, sort of report of it. Um, all it does is open yourself up for ridicule, I suppose, and um, you know maybe an interesting uh, three-minute piece on the local news somewhere. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter whether you've seen one or whether you believe that there's one out there. At the end of the day, the only way that um, there would be any proof to those that from those that do believe um, that Yowies exist is to get some sort of proof which is why I was quite impressed with the Rusty 222 um, because he's making a very conscious and scientific effort you know he, um, he goes out to some very remote places he sets equipment you know an expensive amount of equipment you know five and six very expensive time-lapse cameras um, and then collects, you know, 250,000 images on each camera going through until he finds, you know, six frames out of 250,000 that actually show something peeking in to uh, have a look at these cameras. It's incredibly interesting because um, you only need watch a few of these videos and it does raise the doubt in your mind and that doubt is, is there an unknown animal lurking in the Australian bush. And um, the animal would need to be incredibly cryptic, it would need to be incredibly intelligent, and um, as far as I've been told, um, I'm told that they, they are nocturnal. So the fact of the matter is really, who goes in deep into wild, wild territory and who goes into deep wild territory and um, sees any nocturnal creature in the Australian bush? Around here there's 222 species of animal, mostly nocturnal. During the daytime you don't see them. I go out and take, um, and take uh, wildlife photography as a, hob as a hobby. I set cameras myself. The, uh, the fact of the matter is, I, um, you know, as yet, no um, cryptic animals have, have jumped in front of me. I haven't seen a yowie, I haven't seen a, um, uh, a thylacine, haven't captured anything in that regard. I've only captured na um, native wildlife. However, I have set recorders that have recorded things that very much interest me. So I don't know, I think the whole thing's quite plausible. At the end of the day, 
without being a total sceptic who just ignores any evidence presented, be they, um, be they castings of footprints or be they hair samples or scat samples or uh, anything like that, you know, perhaps it is time that people use the technology that's available today and actually went out and proved it yes or no. Some of the amateurs that I've seen out there collecting evidence have collected enough evidence that I think somebody should have a um, decent look at what's going on. But anyway, intriguing subject. I find it incredibly intriguing. Uh, you know, is it myth? Is it legend? Is it real? The, uh, the people that believe it's real really believe it's real as real as saying, I've seen it, it's that real. Or they've looked at the evidence and they've decided that uh, the evidence that's been collected substantiates the fact that there is something living out there. At the end of the story, I suppose it's just sad that the word Yowie has been adopted by so many other things and turned into um, a cute toy or a shaped chocolate that um, you know nobody really will look at the issue seriously and that's sad from the scientific view because there are people out there that are collecting samples this rusty 222 has hair samples he's matched them on hair identification programs and they don't come up to uh, match to anything um, He's recorded amazing recordings, sound recordings, and he has photographic evidence that, though not clear HD uh, proof with, you know, a Yowie tap dancing in front of the camera, when you see it in sequence and to the efforts that have been put in and the nature of the area that this uh, evidence is trying to be collected from, um, yeah, it's incredibly plausible. There wouldn't be people out there. These head and shoulders aren't the shape of a person. Um, the implausibility of someone actually being out there, yet alone somebody hoaxing, is uh, unbelievable. So anyway, the theories these blokes hold tick a few boxes for reason, for science, to um, have a look. Paul Rusty got these hair samples, sent them off to a scientist who was prepared to, uh, some expert in hair, who um, said, very interesting, um, they show primate but have human characteristics, which excited Rusty no end. But uh, when the questioned about it three months later, wouldn't put his name to it, said they were most possibly dog or wallaby, I think it was, or marsupial or something like that. So a complete turnaround. Although the hairs had been had been um, tested, uh, oh, had been put through a hair identification program, something that had every known animal in Australia. Anyway, I won't keep going on about uh, that, but I really do recommend you do go and have a look at the Rusty 222's channel. I'll put a link down below. The, um, and watch a few, especially some of his last videos where he's been cap capturing amazing evidence. And uh, just keep an open mind to anything that might pop up and um, in regards to the matter and not be closed-minded about it. Because... You know, Rusty and a dozen other blokes that I've discovered along the way uh, are attaining results, um, are using modern technology to record it, and are putting forward a pretty good bloody argument for the fact that there is a uh, hitherto unknown eight foot tall hominid living in the wilds of Australia. So ends my exercise in public speaking.